So the second uh, presentation is about identifying performance problem if you do not have the diagnostic tech license. Um, it's the uh, basic uh, idea. Of course, it's still me. It's the same book. Uh, the agenda for the next hour. Uh, of course, we will start with a short introduction about this topic. <coughs> then there are uh, the three, uh, let's say, um, main parts of this tool is to analyze reproducible problems, to analyze irreproducible problems in right, real time, and to analyze them uh, if they, uh, they do not no longer let's say, occur, so analyze problems in the past. I said that in the book I have three chapters about, about these three uh, topics, it's something like about 120 pages. To summarize everything in, uh, in one hour is probably not possible. So we'll, we'll just touch to some of the most important, let's say, once AI techniques. And, um, and of course, we must also mention that the book also contains, of course, information when you have the diagnostic pack. Okay? So it's just part of the information. And then I will just provide a few information about the Google third party uh, tools. Okay, but let's start with uh, an introduction. Um, first of all, everything I will talk about here is how to analyze or troubleshoot problems that basically are, are uh, due to the database layer. It's important to mention if you have an application, it's, it's the application which is causing the problem. Or as I mentioned before, if it's maybe the network infrastructure which is causing the problem, uh, usually you will not find this kind of problem in the database, okay? So it's important to point out, focus on the database. Uh, that means that I should do this kind of analysis if you know that the database is a problem, or maybe you want to exclude that the database is a problem, okay? But in general, the best way to, let's say, approach a performance problem is to, is to start uh, uh, with an end-to-end -end analysis at the application layer, okay? So where you can know how much time is spent on the application, on the network, on the database, and so on. Maybe with this kind of analysis you can know whether it's possible or necessary that the problem is in the database and so you want to analyze it. Um, I would say the goal of every performance analysis uh, for a problem in the database is always the same. You want to discover the time-consuming SQL or PL SQL code. Okay. Then it doesn't matter where the problem is directly related to the SQL statement itself or in the way that the database engine executes it. It's not important, but you want to find out which operation is low based or it takes too much, uh, too long. And then for uh, this SQL statement, you want to gather some information that allows you to know what's going on. That means, for example, if it's a SQL statement, you want to have an execution plan. Then you want to have runtime statistics, you know, how it is executed, how long it takes, how much CPU it use, and so on. And um, if the statement, uh, for example, experience weight events, want to know whether it spends a lot of time doing I.O. or um, accessing through a data link other system or waiting for a lot, whatever. Okay. So basically the idea is to get the list of operations which are slow and then as much information as possible about uh, the execution of uh, those data. That you can know okay, what is low and start, let's say, uh, finding a way to make uh, stuff uh, faster. So that, I would say, it's the goal on every performance analysis you do on a database. <coughs> now, some uh, basic question uh, to answer. Um, first of all, you have to uh, know whether the problem can be reproduced or not. Why it is important simply because the Oracle database provides plenty of feature to analyze a performance issue and depending which situation you are, some features are more, let's say, easier or 
um, and more easier to, to use and uh, much faster in the analysis. Okay. If the problem is, uh, it can be reproduced, then we will look at how to analyze it in the section 2, which is, of course, the part about analysis of reproducible problems. Okay. If it's not the case, then you have to take the next question. If the problem cannot be reproduced, the question is whether you know that, for example, every Friday at 10 a.m., I always have, uh, the system always have a kind of problem, so that you can wait until the next time that you have a performance problem in production. Okay. If you can wait for something like that, then uh, we will talk about the, the methods or the feature to be used for the analysis in the third section. And if you cannot wait, then basically what you need is a repository containing historical information. That means you cannot, and if you cannot reproduce it, and maybe the problem never happens again, then the only thing you can do is to check the repository containing performance information and try to figure out what happened. Yeah. Of course, I would say the easier thing to do is the first one, uh, where, where you can reproduce the problem and just uh, see what's what's going on. Uh, the second one, it's let's say possible, but sometimes you have to be fast in your analysis. And the third one is where uh, we must be a bit, uh, let's say, lucky to do a, a decent analysis. Okay. So. These are basically the, the three parts that um, we cover now. Let's start with the uh, reproducible problems. I would say the approach is uh, quite easy. Since you can reproduce a problem, uh, that means executing a statement or executing a job or a paper or a report uh, or doing something with the application that um, is experiencing the performance uh, problem. So the idea is basically that while you are reproducing problem, you can basically trace everything that the database engine does, okay? And based on the trace files, you have more or less almost everything you need, okay? There are really few cases where um, if you can reproduce a problem and you trace it, that the trace file doesn't contain everything you need for an, uh, uh, um, a good analysis. <coughs> Okay, um, so the point is just starting SQL trace, that depending how you reproduce the problem, it could be for a single statement, for a session, for um, you know, a service, whatever. Okay, just have to start SQL trace at a, at a good level. Okay, and again, if uh, most of the time is spent from SQL statement to trace file, you find what is needed. Notice if that most of the time is spent processing PL SQL code, the problem is that the SQL trace will not contain, let's say, a lot of interesting information. We, we only find out that, yes, PL SQL is spending a lot of time. Okay, in such a case, you have to use a PL SQL profiler uh, to analyze for what's uh, going on. But this is, my, uh, according to my experience, something that doesn't happen that frequently. I mean that really the PL SQL is low. It's, yeah. I didn't so many of, uh, of these cases in, in the past. Okay, um, <coughs> what is specific to an analysis without a diagnostic pack? With such an analysis, I would say basically uh, nothing because uh, SQL trace, the PL SQL profiler do not depend on, on uh, diagnostic pack. Do also not depend on the enterprise edition, so there are features which are available in every edition. And if we look at which other feature is available and that could be useful for the analysis, I would say it's the most useful if you have the, the license to do that would be the uh, real time monitoring feature. For example, if the problem is a <coughs> single statement, I would say the real time monitoring feature is really a, a very <coughs> easy way to do an analysis. But again, it requires not only the diagnostic pack, also the human pack. But my opinion is, it's the only feature I miss. I mean, if I work for a customer on a standard edition, um, 
I mean, and I have to analyze the performance of my of a statement and I miss this feature. I don't miss AWR or whatever. Okay. You don't, you don't find yourself using Ash more than SQL Trace? Not for this kind of situation because Ash has uh, its own, let's say, limitation. Uh, of course, it's sampling. You can reproduce <coughs> a problem frequently. What I see is a problem that doesn't last hours, maybe seconds. And if you start using hash in seconds, I, you must be lucky, let's say. So I would say I use hash a lot. It's not a problem, but it's when I can reproduce something, usually I don't really like hash, especially if it, if it doesn't run for uh, at least minutes. Minutes, minutes it's, yeah, it's also not that. Uh, the problem is really that the hash sample of one second can sometimes add a lot of Tracing information. Uh, tracing database calls, I would say we can go quite quickly uh, over this topic. I mean, there are several features to activate SQL trace from the other session, the DBMS monitor package, the DBMS session package. So there are plenty of, let's say, features to activate <coughs> SQL trace. I would say the only important thing here is just to focus on the right piece of let's say, of information. It means if you, if you are interested in a, in a single, for example, what a single session does, then just trace the session and don't start tracing everything that they are uh, databases do. Okay? If you are interested in a, single, uh, in a single statement, just make sure that you just trace one execution of one statement. Okay. Um, then, of course, when activated SQL trace generates the trace file, that contains, uh, let's say, all not necessary information. Um, to analyze the trace file, Oracle provides TKProf, which is more or less uh, a tool that over the last probably 10 years or so was almost never improved by Oracle. That means that right now it's not, uh, it doesn't always make every analysis easy. Okay. But of course, there are also third party tools. I have my own tool, which is called TBDXstat. Uh, um, there are also, for example, the tools from Methodar, uh, which are, I would say, the best for the analysis of SQL trace. But of course, they also cost some money. So, um, I must say, I usually find it uh, enough to use, uh, uh, for example, my own profiler. Uh, I also have the, the method art profilers because I want to know what they do and so on. But I would say the advantage of using them for me is not that important. Maybe for other person might be uh, might be interesting to look at this tool. But I would say it's important to see that such tools exist depending on what you are doing. It's important to have them or not. Of course, if you are not frequently doing this kind of analysis, maybe if you have a better tool that provides you a better output, it, it, it is easy. In my case, as I say, I spend a lot of time doing performance analysis, so I would like to look at the trace fund and, and see what's in there. Okay, that's for the SQL trace part. If you have to profile the PL SQL code, I mean, the PL SQL code is low. Uh, or other situation makes no sense to do this kind of analysis. For that, Oracle provides two profilers. Basically, it has the so called uh, hierarchical profiler, which is uh, provided through the package DBMS HProf. This profiler is available since 11.1. If you are still using 10G or older release, uh, it's not available. And the second one is the um, old DBMS profiler. I would say the most important difference between the two is the, well, the, the HProf is a call level profiler. That means it gives you for every call, it doesn't matter whether it's a PL SQL call to a function or a call to a SQL statement, it gives you basically information about how many times you call it and how long it took. Okay? And that for every level. So if you have piece of the SQL that calls a function, that calls another procedure, and so on. You have, for every level in the call stack, this kind of information. From the other side, the profiler, uh, the DBMS profiler is a line-level profiler. 
So in general, you get more detailed information, but since it's a line level profiler, its impact on the performance is much higher. So usually, um, most peer SQL code that you need to profile, uh, basically, if you run the profiler activated, uh, the code will be much, much slower. And I'm not talking from percent, but from factors. Okay. And where it's not the case is uh, basically the SQL code who is performing well and who is uh, executing a lot of SQL code. But that's exactly the case you, are, you do not want to analyze with a, SQL profile, with a, a DPMS profile or peer SQL profile. Okay. So when you need it, usually <coughs> the core level profiler is much uh, better. So it should be your first choice. Uh, except, of course, if you really need to know which line is causing the, the problem. But in that case, I would say it's better to start with the uh, edge prof. Then if you find, OK, I have my bottleneck in a very specific function, and to analyze this part of the code, you can use the, the other profile. Uh, notice that the easiest way to use this, this profile is um, with a, um, a tool. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you use SQL Developer from Oracle or Toad. Uh, um, Basically, they have um, an interface for them. So basically, when you have a, um, when you execute something, for example, SQL Developer, you can just click a button and say, "I want a uh, hprof uh, profile of the execution," and basically, it run a couple of uh, say, screens to give you the information. It's not very nice what they show you, but it's, I mean, it shows you what is the uh, basic code. So if you have to do it, do it in a tool, it's much better. But of course, if you want to use SQL Plus, it's also possible that the API is, is uh, uh, documented. So this was for the first part. As I said, uh, there is not much which is uh, specific to uh, that and that tech or not. Basically, what we need is a label independent of the release you're using. and. Um, Released edition and um, whether you, you license the pack or not. Questions? Could I just ask, do you see much performance problems with just pure PLC core? Like, no. 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 Because no, mine normally, the ones that I investigate normally end up as a, like, a poorly performing <coughs> SQL statement. Yeah, but yeah. SQL code is yeah. the most, most common. Course. I would say over the last say ten years, I probably had to use the PLSQL profiler three, four times. Not most. So it's really not. I mean, you you really have to do some yeah. say, strange processing if you have a problem at PLSQL. Mm -hmm. And probably if you have this kind of situation, maybe PLSQL was also the wrong language. I would say, but. Sometimes it happens, but not frequently. OK, the second part, real-time analysis of, of a problem which should not be reprodu reproduced. Okay? That means, for example, it's a typical case. Somebody calls you and say, hey, right now the production is low. And uh, whenever I started this report 10 minutes ago, it's not yet finished. What's going on? So you, have to, you want to analyze something now. Um, and for this kind of analysis, it's important to say that the um, a SQL trace is not really interesting for the simple, uh, simple reason that um, activating SQL trace and something that already is running, uh, from one side you miss part of the information, and from the other side, depending on the call, it's not immediately <coughs> activated. So usually when you're analyzing this kind of problem, it's better uh, a different approach. So, and the approach looks basically like that. I would say, first of all, you should st start checking the database server load. In my opinion, something really important, because um, <laughs> if you have a system that has a problem, maybe the problem is not caused by, let's say, uh, what thing it's caused, I mean the SQL statement which are executed by an application, but maybe there is something else running on the same server with using a lot of resources and slowing down your processing. Okay. So 
it's important to know whether, uh, especially if you have many databases on a single server, or maybe a few databases that other application servers, whatever, which are running on the same server. So the first thing to check is always do somebody else uh, um, performs uh, or use a lot of, for example, CPU on this uh, system. This is the first thing you have to check. Um, and we will see in a moment a few more details about it. The next point is to define what's the target. Here it's really important to see that if somebody calls you and tells, uh, yeah, the database is low, okay, without specifying, uh, more, without giving you more information, what you can only do is to say, okay, let's look at the system and see what is spending a lot of time or whatever. From the other side, if they tell you one specific session is low or is running a report since 10 minutes, or maybe you already know the SQL statement that is low, then it's very important to focus on SQL statement or session. One of the mistakes we see quite often is that we know what is more or less low, a few sessions, but then we start looking at something else and uh, maybe at the system level, statement that takes more time, um, takes more DB time of different statements. But it maybe it's fine. Sometimes you have reports that takes hours and nobody complains about it. And sometimes somebody calls you because they want that report that runs in 30 seconds, but it should be one second. Okay. And of course, if you have a lot of load on the system, uh, stuff which are quite fast, let's say, are not really visible. So it's important to focus on this, the, the smallest problem you can. If you know the SQL statement, focus on it. If you, if you, need, uh, if you know the session of the problem, then focus on the session. If you really have no clue, then uh, you can go for the system. Of course, if you focus on the, let's say, the SQL statement to start, uh, then the point is quite simple. You get all possible information about the SQL statement that you can. Okay, for example, execution plan must be known. Okay. From the other side, if you focus uh, on the session, then basically what you should do is um, a session level analysis. So it's finding out uh, what is doing this session, and you basically you want to identify which are the top SQL statements executed by the session. So you can see, for example, over a minute, whatever, you know, to check, okay, spending a lot of time and what is working well. Okay. Of course, if you find few SQL statements which are using a lot of uh, DB time, you find your, let's say, uh, the statement you are looking for. So again, you have to get the information about the statement. From the other side, if there are no top SQL statements, simply because you see that there are so, let's say, uh, thousands of statements which are executed and everyone is fast, in such a situation, um, <coughs> basically, you can say that the problem is not the database itself, but usually it's the application. So bad code. People case uh, mentioned by team four with raw by all processing, whatever. Uh, maybe you have an application that is joining the data and the application and just takes one row at a time with a simple statement. Okay. So if you do not see few SQL statements which are responsible for the majority of the deep time, then it's usually non, not sensible to look at the statement in deep time. So we'll say if you don't, do not have at least, let's say, uh, um, a percentage which is in uh, two-digit figure, uh, it's usually not sensible because you have to start looking at many SQL statements and possibly they are all really fast. So it, the application design should be questioned in this kind of situation. And the same, <coughs> by the way, happens if you see a neither session. Okay. So sometimes somebody says, yeah, I started this report 10 minutes ago, it's not finished, what happens at the database level, and you check it, you see the session is doing nothing, so the problem is somewhere else. Okay. It's the, the case where you have to use another tool to <coughs> investigate the problem, for example, at the application server level. Okay. So if you see sessions which are idle, 
cannot be responsible for bad performance. Okay. So it is for the session level. Uh, now, if you take the system level approach, uh, I would say it is more or less the same. But you do it at the system level, so you are not only considering one session, but you are considering many sessions. And again, it is the idea is to, to find out few SQL statements which use a lot of DB time. And again, if you find them, then you get more information about the statement. In your, if you don't find them, I mean, if the system is idle or, as before, you see many SQL, different SQL statements, and again, you should question uh, the application and not, uh, not the database. Okay? Because the idea is always to find few, let's say, execution SQL statements or whatever, uh, it takes a lot of time, so if you um, make them faster, you can, let's say, improve the performance. Okay. If you need to tune thousands of statements, it's not something you will be able to do in, uh, let's say, that fast. Okay, questions about the approach? Or, it's fine. If it's not the case now, the idea we will uh, have a look at uh, how, let's say, to find out which are the SQL statements, which are slow, and so on. Uh, based on this uh, uh, approach. <clears throat> so, if you are doing a real-time analysis, usually what you are looking at uh, is uh, the information provided by dynamic performance teams, typically Vidola. Okay? So Vidola provides you everything basically you need. So what kind of information you find in the Vidolas? You can find information about the OS, for example, uh, how much the, the CPU is loaded at the OS level. Uh, you can get time model statistics that tells you what the database engine is doing. I mean, executing SQL statement or peel SQL code or doing parses, whatever. So it's more a, uh, um, yeah. doesn't tell you, let's say, which SQL statement is using uh, more time, but what the database engine is doing. Uh, then you can have stuff about weight classes, weight events, there are a lot of middle views that provide this kind of information. Um, you have system and session statistics. I'm in Sysstat, yeah, middle of Sysstat, middle of Sysstat. Uh, the problem of this statistic usually is that they are about counters. So for the analysis, they are most of the time not very important. Usually we look at system statistic only when, for example, you have a process with 100% on CPU and no weight event, you don't really know what it's doing, then it's good to look at the system stats to know whether it's doing logical I.O. or whatever. Okay. But since there are most of the systems that are counter, they are not, that, I would say, that frequently used. Basically, system stats, it's important to say it's what we used to use uh, 15, 20 uh, years ago, when we where we compute a lot of radios about all possible stuff. Then something which is available since 10G are metrics. Okay, and metrics, it's a bit different because system statistics are, again, there are counters, and metrics tells you how much is doing the database, for example, how much CPU per second, and how many I.O. per second, and okay. these are information which are much more interesting. And what is important also to say that everything I mentioned up to now, it's available uh, in every edition, also standard edition, and for the metrics, the only, let's say, um, uh, issue here that the metrics provided by VDollar views are available also without the diagnostic tech in the standard edition. Uh, however, the metrics which are stored in AWR require enterprise edition and diagnostic tech. Okay? But again, for a real-time analysis, we do not care about AWR, so we can use metrics for this kind of uh, analysis. Then you have other views like VDollar session that tells you what is the status of a session. Okay. Uh, active session history, which is a very interesting um, piece of information, but here we need the diagnostic tech. So uh, for what, say for our purpose here, we can only say active session history is not available. 
Okay, but of course, in some analysis, uh, we would like to have this information. Uh, then you have statistic about SQL statements. Basically, every curse which is in the library cache tells you how much time it was spent executing it, how many weights uh, I owe it, and stuff like that. And then you have we have real time monitoring, something I already mentioned before. Uh, and again, here is diagnostic and tuning tech only. So from what you see here for a real time analysis, you miss only basically two information: active session history and the real time monitoring. Everything else. It's also available in standard edition without any specific license. Okay? And this is, a, in my opinion, very important because the information are there, we can use them. Okay? And um, yeah, that means an analysis is possible even though we do not have the um, enterprise edition diagnostic PEG license. So, what is the difference if we do not have the diagnostic PEG? I would say there are two main uh, let's say challenges, problems we, we have to face. We do not have enterprise manager, so for people that uh, don't like, let's say, uh, command lines, mm, it's not a good, because in my opinion, enter enterprise manager pages are um, not bad at all. I uh, would like to, to see them improve, but let's see what you get is usually not, uh, not that bad. Especially, I would say, uh, with the introduction of the hash, uh, of hash analytics. Without the introduction of hash analytics, um, some of the analysis I mentioned before are really difficult. For example, in enterprise manager, you cannot, without the hash analytics, focus on one session. I mean, there are some stuff, but it's not, you know, the analysis is a bit tricky, let's say. But again, enterprise manager is not a big one. And the second, Problem is that uh, many of the views that, or of the information I mentioned before, are based on counters or on totals. Uh, the only exception are matrix. And for a real-time analysis, this kind of uh, views are a bit of a problem because you want to know what the system is doing now, not what the system did over the last days. Okay. So if you have a cursor which is loaded in the library cache for days, it's always in execution. Looking at the at statistic is not really uh, useful. Okay, so basically, what you need, you need some tools, utilities, script, whatever that samples <coughs> this view to get uh, a, let's say, um, a picture of what is going on now. Okay, <coughs> and it's basically that part of the information is what is doing Oracle with that back and uh, edge, for example. Of course, what I will show uh, over the next slides um, are, let's say, techniques based on scripts which are freely available and, again, can be used on any Oracle database, whatever the licensing is. So, uh, let's get back to the approach I, I mentioned before. The first point was to check the database server load. Uh, again, my opinion should always start except I mean, if you focus on one SQL statement, maybe you can say, okay, let's keep that far. But in general, uh, if you run uh, statements uh, or whatever on one system, it's good to know how much the system is loaded. So that you know maybe that system is close to be CPU bound or IO bound or whatever. Okay? So it's not to you know what is the status of the environment. And again, as I mentioned before, here the idea is to find out whether uh, the system is used, in which way the system is used. And if you check that in Enterprise Manager, uh, that's it, so you have Enterprise Manager, um, for that uh, check, uh, what you, how you could check it is in the performance uh, home page, you see um, information like that. I must also mention that depending on the version of Enterprise Manager, you, you do not have all the information you see here. If you have a recent release, you, you have all this information. Basically, basically, what they show with this picture is uh, in green you see how much CPU the current database is using. Then there is in light green, which is basically not visible here, is how much CPU is used for the background process by the current instance. 
So in this case, you can see probably two cores are used from the current instance in average. And then uh, the part here, you, you can see how much CPU is spent by somebody else running on the system. Could be a database, could be an application server, could be a shell script, you, you don't really know. At the point, what I, I want to mention here is that, for example, here between 2.10 p.m. and 2.15, you see that all CPU cores of the system are used, delivery 100%. Okay. And of course, if you have something running at that time, and it's something that uses a lot of CPU, uh, then it's quite likely that it will be slow. Okay. So when you do the analysis, finding out that there are something else using the system and like in this case, <coughs> the uh, CPU is completely used, this is an important information to know. And again, as I mentioned before, maybe this period you have really something slow, not because the application is running something different, use different execution plans, but because somebody else is causing the problem. Okay. Now, to get um, this information, basically uh, what you need, and also what for a user for this page, is nothing else than V$ OSTAT and V$ metric. And as mentioned before, is you can be used. So the point is just you need a script or whatever that just samples this information to show um, to show it. Uh, in my case, what I uh, distribute through um, the book uh, is a script which is call, uh, called postload.sql uh, that basically just samples this information. Uh, it takes as parameter uh, one number which is just a number of minutes and then it shows in one minute intervals what is the load of the system? So we see that um, I see uh, which period I'm looking at, how long it is in seconds, then I have how much CPU, foreground CPU is used by the current DB, 1.71 first the first. I see how much background CPU is used by the current instance, then you see. Uh, the, the CPU um, used by somebody else. Uh, the OS load, the OS loads is important to say that uh, it's also provided by VDollar OS that is basically the OS load from an operating system point of view. Okay, it's basically um, what the OS provides to Oracle, and then the number of um, the number of CPUs. Actually, I must. As I mentioned, the most important information is coming from V$ OS that is only the number of CPU. Everything else is coming here from V$ matrix. Now, um, of course, we cannot flip uh, the slides easily, but if you check the numbers on this slide, and you, you check this, um, this chart here, they are uh, exactly from the same period, and you can see that the numbers you get are the same. Of course, here is nicely, with some colors, my point is that on the same database, at the same time, I took a snapshot from the screen and I, I use my script and I get exactly the same information. Then, of course, if you want, you can even write some kind of tool or graphical interface for that. It's not a problem. Okay. The point is the information is there and you can use it, uh, whatever the licensing is. Uh, notice that the script, I, I, I mentioned it here, um, again, are available on my own page, so they can be downloaded. And usually, the script that I execute uh, here directly are, uh, let's say, silly scripts. Uh, what I mean by that is that if I open, for example, the loads, host load here, um, host load. <coughs> The script itself, it's really simple. Um, it just contains some, some lines to format the output. Okay. And if we check the real statement, it's always very simple. It just selects a couple of columns, and you see uh, on the bottom there is a, a this case is a pipeline uh, table function. The idea is that I have a piece of PLC that 
uh, it's let's say the data, okay, and then pipes the data out of the function at a regular let's say interval. The point is that in this way you can, for example, start such a script in a terminal, let it run for hours, every couple of minutes it gets uh, um, uh, updated, okay, and you see a uh, uh, kind of Say, uh, for example, when you start top and you see the updates, okay. And the only way, in my opinion, to do something like that, it's all the easier way in, in every case is through a table function. So the real uh, logic, or if you want to see or modify the, the um, let's say the logic is really in the in the function. So usually with every with every script, I have the script itself. And then I have two other scripts. One is the, sorry, for, let's see, like that. It's not really pretty. One is the script that is used to get the information. Then there is a setup script. It's always the same name, but setup. And a teardown if you want to install it. And the, um, uh, the setup one is where, let's say, the interesting part is contained. This case is just uh, I mean, some SQL with, of course, somewhere a select on the dollar metric and whatever. Okay. Um, this is how it works. That also means that uh, if you want to use this script as it is, the idea is that you have to install this object on your database so that when you have to uh, uh, do an analysis that are already available, you can just simply start the scripts. Of course, it will also be possible to create the objects on the fly and to drop them at the end of the script. But in my opinion, doing this kind of uh, data dictionary, let's say, uh, operation, in case that the system is already uh, loaded, it's always tricky. So it's much better, in my opinion, to create uh, stuff uh, before the problem happens. Okay. Okay, now that we know what the status of the system is, um, there are the system, session, and SQL statement analysis. Okay? So, if you are looking, we start with the system level. Basically, um, yeah, there are several steps you have to check. Uh, and remember, system level, that means we have no idea what we are looking at, just the system is low, and we are uh, looking for a statement that takes, let's say, um, a lot of DB time. So usually what I do is I start checking the average number of active sessions, that means in average how many sessions are really active. Okay. The point here is that if you see a system that has few active sessions, uh, you have a chart again from an enterprise manager, I mean if I see such a system where I have, uh, for example, 8 CPU, and I see that only, for example, one CPU is used, I would say, okay, from the CPU point of view, the system is not very loaded. Okay. But if I check only the average uh, active session, depending on the period, here it goes from four at the beginning, then it goes six, here it's more than 10, and then it goes down. My point is usually if you have a number of active session which is say close to the number of CPU or cores you have on your system, uh, usually the system, I would say, it's, there is some load, but it's not a real problem, okay? So you do not have a, let's say, a very important slowdown. For example, in the case I mentioned before of the, uh, the customer having trouble with locks la last week, and they had, I think, 20 cores, and they had at, at some period of time an active session history of 200. You see something like that, you say, okay, something is wrong. Okay. Uh, there is really something that we have to look at. If it's something like that, you say, okay, there is some load, but it's not special. From the other side, if you see on such a system, you have a, an average active session of one or two, you can say the database does nothing. Okay? Because it's, it's not really doing a lot of work. In any case, it should, you should not have a problem because the system is overloaded. So the first thing I always do, I check the average active session, just to have a clue how much the system uh, is loaded. And what I also do, I check the um, 
uh, uh, the system level time model statistic we'll see in a moment now. This is important because uh, you get an idea whether the system is doing a lot of processing with the SQL engine, the PSQL engine, the Java engine, or whatever. So you have an idea what kind of operation the system is executing. Then, of course, you will check whether there are a few statements which are responsible for most of the DB time. That is uh, what we always have to do. But again, in my opinion, it's not the first thing you have to focus on. First of all, it's always nice to have an idea of what the system is doing. So you start from the OS, as we have seen before, and you will check the system, let's say, average active session, time model, you know uh, uh, what it's doing, and then you start looking at the SQL statement. And optionally, you might want to also check the system on a different perspective. This is especially interesting if you do not find some top SQL statement, then maybe you can check whether some module, session, components are spending a lot of time. If it is the case, maybe you have identified which part of the application is, is uh, doing a lot of processing. That doesn't provide you a real information what you have to tune, but can give you an information what is the next thing I have to look at. So if you see a specific module is spending a lot of time or a specific program, then you can start um, let's say analyzing in detail with the developer of these parts uh, what they are doing. So again, let's have a look how we can get this information. Uh, for the system level loads, let's say really at the top level, uh, basically the picture you get there. What you need, you need middle system model and middle system weight class. Again, to be used which are available in every Oracle release. Uh, the only problem this use contains uh, accumulated values. So basically you need again a tool that does some sampling on them. Uh, what I propose here is a, again a simple script which is called system activity dot, dot S, S <coughs> Okay, and we might also try to look how it, it looks like, system D, SQL. And I have two parameters. The first one is how, how long, let's say, every sample should take and how many samples I want, let's say 10 or 20. Uh, just to have an idea how this kind of uh, script works. So the idea yet now this script takes every second um, um, it's a snapshot of situation and then provide some information. So as I mentioned before, you can have a terminal, you leave a terminal open and you get some information how the system is loaded. Okay? The idea basically, of course, in a, in a text form, you get exactly the same um, the same picture of it. So you know how much CPU you are using and how much in percent of every weight class and how it's it tall the, the curve is. Okay. Again, these are just scripts. If you want something rather mm -hmm. it's quite easy to, uh, to do it. I also like script because I work from uh, remotely for customers and sometimes it's good that you can do everything you need through a terminal without any specific, let's say, configuration. Uh, the next point is, uh, as I said, this time model. With this uh, time model information, as I said before, you can have an idea of how the system is spending the time. So here we see that the only time model figures that were increased during this second are this one. And if we check the, the percentage, okay, the average active session must be more or less equal to what we have seen before because they have a stable load of this system. And okay, now it's not really readable in this way, but what we see is that basically we have 85% is executing on the SQL engine. Build SQL engine is just, what, 20, and 90%. And then we have just few percent in the background. So here we can already know, okay, I do some processing build SQL, do some processing in SQL, but the the majority is in the SQL part. It's probably where I have to focus to first time to analyze this uh, problem. Okay. The point is, with this kind of information, now I know that uh, more or less what my system is doing, how much it is loaded. Uh -huh. Okay. 
Now, this was for the system part. Uh, when we start focusing on SQL statement, uh, we will see uh, in a moment. But at least the system uh, level, let's say, information are there. Now, if we, if we focus on specific sessions, uh, or we want to have also the information which are the top session on my system, just to know whether few sessions are spending a lot of time or not. Again, here we can use a set of views like Vidor Assistant, uh, Systime Model, Sestime Model, and Vidor Session, just to know which are the sessions are spending a lot of time on the system. And again, also in this case, I have um, a small script, Active Sessions, okay, that use these views. And of course, if you want to see how it works, uh, just download the scripts. And the point here uh, from this script, it shows you, in this case, every second, uh, from one second, uh, I have to specify, sorry, let's say 10 times for, okay. I specify, I want to know the information, which are the top session every second, uh, five times, I don't know, five, um, 10 times, for five uh, top sessions. So basically, it's it's just it's pulling the information. It tells me the system has every time 55 sessions which are open. Interesting here, I also show how many logins are performed. Why that? Because I want to find out, let's say before, if I have an application that continually open and close session. So if you have a steady number of sessions and you, are, you see a lot of logins, and you can know, okay, the application is uh, open and closed into session. Of, co of course, if increased is one, you know, it's open. See, if it's not increasing like here, uh, for example, yeah, you have three new connections during one second, okay? And then for this period, it shows you which are the top session. Okay, in this case, there are all uh, background processes, quite interesting, even though something is running, and uh, how much it, it is the activity. The point is just let's find out who is spending time on uh, the database. Okay. Why <clears throat> every switch is having problem? Uh, this is a more, let's say, better case where you see a real session. I mean, from a real user doing some stuff through the uh, JDBC. In this way, you can identify whether some sessions spend a lot of time. And again, uh, in the same way when you identify the top SQL, if you see here a few sessions which are, um, which are uh, responsible for 20, 30, 40% of the DB time, then you know, okay, you want to focus on them. On the other side, if you have something like here, you see 10 sessions, eh? here we have top 10, and the top one is 1.8% and the last, the last one, 1.4%. can know, okay, a <coughs> lot of session, more than 100, and every one of them is accounting just for a small percentage of their time. That means you cannot focus on one session and find a problem, let's say. Because at most, even though you, s you, you speed up what is doing one of these sessions, you can save at most, say, 2%, which is not. So when you are looking at top statement, top session, and so on, you are always looking for cases where you have a lot of time spent on from few, let's say, guys. Okay. Um, now, if you go down to uh, the SQL level, uh, I didn't spend time writing a script at the level simply because Daniel Potter wrote an excellent script, which is called Snapper. In my opinion, it makes sense to use. So I will just reference the script here. Uh, if you don't know Snapper, it's a really interesting tool that basically does, does sampling on the middle of session. Make it, let's say, simple. Um, what it does, it just does a lot of sample on the middle of session, also quite quick, not too many samples per second. And then it provides you some, let's say, charts that give you information about it. It's very flexible, you can, uh, the script I show you before are, let's say, simple, but we're, uh, not flexible at all. I mean, to do only one thing, you can just change the timeouts and this kind of stuff. From the other side, so Snapper is very flexible, so you can uh, specify, let's say, hundreds of different parameters, uh, depending what you want and how you want to format the information. 
So from one side is nice because it's very flexible, from the other side is not necessarily the easiest script to use. Okay. But basically what you can do with uh, Snapper is something like that. You say uh, Snapper with S SQL ID, I say I want to do sampling based on SQL ID for uh, 15 seconds, um, one time for all session. Then you get such an output that tells you, okay, the SQL ID uh, with this number uh, consumes is active 200% of the time. That means it has two active sessions, average active session. Okay. So in this case, you can see, uh, you can identify, let's say, a few statements that consumes quite a lot uh, of resources. But the good thing of Snapper, as I said before, is that you can change completely the output. For example, what is specified here with SQL ID, there you can specify any column which is in the middle of session. So if you want, instead of the SQL ID, you want, for example, event or module program, you can just write there, also concatenate several information, and then just execute it. And of course, you can also not only sample on all session, but you can focus on one session, like in this case, or on several sessions. It's quite flexible what you can do. You can also put a, a, a sub-query there to just select uh, a few sessions. Okay. So the idea is really that you can change the outputs depending uh, really on the situation. But again, the, the good part is you, you, you can really say, I don't want only the SQL ID, I want also the event, and maybe the program. You simply add this information, and then it's empty again from two seconds. So you can see uh, what, whether it is on CPU, doing some weights, which is the program. You see it's a Java application in most of the situation. So it's a quite simple tool or a simple script from the utilization, if you check it, it's probably a few thousand lines of complex code, but it allows you to get basically what you get in the active um, uh, activity, just you know, activity monitor and enterprise manager, where you get the load, and on the bottom you get top SQL statement, top session, top modules, and so on. So it gives you more or less the same information at a different time without having again, uh, for requiring specific license. Okay. So what does the active kind of represent in terms of the totals that you got? 50, 30, yeah. 30 what's all that? It's the, I must say I don't really like how Tanel put it, but here is basically 50% that means uh, half, uh, average, uh, half active session. So it will be 0 0.5 average active session. Right. So you have to know it's not 50% of the total, but it's how much, yeah, how much active session is using. So basically, it's not that easy to know this statement how much it accounts on the total. It's something it's not provided here. And um, in all my script, I always put the average active session because I think it's something you can. Uh, if I have 10 total and I consume 2.5, I know okay. One part, and this information is not a big movie. <clears throat> okay, this is for Snapper at the, um, at the, um, the sampling the, um, session. Then, if you need SQL statement information, uh, of course, also here there are uh, plenty of view with our SQL, with our SQL area, with our SQL stat. Okay. Basically, uh, for every one of, of these, I also have a, a small script uh, that shows you the information which is contained. For one side, why I wrote a script? For one side, because the views provide a lot of information. If you do a simple select star, you get something which is not readable. That's the first point, why I wrote the script. And the second part is also because the script does some diff. For example, you can say, I want to see the statement we have seen before, let, uh, give me the information what the statement did in the last 10 seconds. And so I have the total, but I also have in the last 10 seconds how much we need, not only the accumulated uh, values. Okay. That's the idea of this uh, script. In this case, what it shows you, because I must say the scripts are also a bit different 
and I never remember which one does exactly what. In this case, what I get for this SQL ID, okay, it detects, so we know whether it's, we know what we are looking at, and in this case, it just provides the uh, all the information, starting from the cursor, in which container it is, all the parsing related stuff, uh, which module action, secret profile, whatever. Uh, uh, information about the parse, which is the cursor, when, uh, how many times it was loaded, and so on. Then we have some um, information about the activity, so you have basically DB time, CPU time, and weight. Uh, then the different weights uh, class, so we see how much, for example, we spend a lot of time on, uh, on uh, user uh, IO. Then the tree engine, uh, depending, like here it's everything SQL engine, but sometimes you have a SQL that calls PHP, SQL that calls Java, whatever, so it's interesting to know how much is spent inside every engine. Maybe you can say, okay, it's not the SQL line. We look at this, uh, the uh, function which is called or something like that. Then you have, here is some information uh, about execution, uh, per execution, per room, for example, how many buffers, and so on. So the point is just, as I mentioned before, just to format a bit of uh, information. And also maybe interesting if you are using, uh, uh, or you know Enterprise Manager, so is one page providing more or less exactly the same information. I try to use more or less the same headers and stuff. So uh, what I basically did when I wrote this script, I look, in many cases I looked what they do good in Enterprise Manager, and I just tried to have something that shows you exactly the same information, maybe even better, where it's possible um, without using again, the tool, but directly in C++. So, this is, I'm going to stress there are just a few scripts from that I, uh, I wrote myself, but of course you can take them, modify them, do whatever you want with uh, this code. My point is just to demonstrate you can get all this information, even though the diagnostic pack is not uh, available. Okay, questions? If it's not the case, the uh, last part, and I will say it's much shorter, huh? uh, we, we are not going to stay here uh, up to 10. Um, <laughs> Post-mortem analysis. Um, approach. Basically, the approach, if you cannot reproduce a problem, or basically what you have to do, if somebody calls and say, uh, tells you, yesterday at uh, 10 a.m. I had a performance problem, can you check what happened? If you have such a question, of course, you can answer them. It's only if you have somewhere a repository containing information about yesterday. Now, Oracle provides basically two repositories, the automatic workload repository since Stangy and stats pack for any release you want. Okay. Now, AWR is, for using it, you need the diagnostic pack. Okay. So I would say for the analysis here, the idea is that you have to use that part, which in many ways is really similar to uh, AWR. Actually, when they developed AWR, they took that part, they improved it, I would say, a bit. Okay? And only in recent years, there are a bit more difference between the two, but the architecture, more or less, or the idea is exactly the same. But what are, in my opinion, the most important difference between the two? From one side, PWR is uh, integrating into database engine, for example, snapshot out, automatically taken, and so on. It is automatically installed when you install a database. Okay, so it's there in every database. Even in standard edition, uh, they install it and they use it for, let's say, specific uh, let's say, purposes. From the other side, StatsPack is just a bunch of uh, scripts that you can start, creates a package, <coughs> the tables, okay, uh, and you have to do it yourself. But it's also easy, it's not a problem. AWR store information about system level data, basically what you have seen before, 
SQL statement, uh, SQL statement level. And what is interesting is also source session level data in form of hash data. Okay. So if you have hash, let's say right, the runtime part, they persist some of this information in AWR. From the other side, in uh, StatsPack, you only have the system and the sec SQL level data. And the hash, since it's something you need to back back uh, for it, it's not a limit. So it's one, it's probably your, the most important difference between the two, I would say. Uh, again, AWR, you need Enterprise Edition and uh, Diagnostic Pack and at least NG, uh, StatsPack, uh, any release, any edition, and so on. And for uh, AWR, you have a, an integration in Enterprise Manager. Uh, for StatsPack, there is no integration in Enterprise Manager. Uh, there are some tools, graphical tools that support it, but let's say the tools you receive from Oracle, there is no integration. Okay, so there are the, let's say, the four main um, difference between the two. Now, what happens if you have to do an analysis with the, the, without the diagnostic pack? I would say if you base your analysis on the AWR repository uh, uh, report, basically the analysis is almost identical to what you do with AWR or StatsPack. There isn't the report, not many differences. Okay, uh, there are only a few section, uh, additional section, but it's not really that AWR provides you a lot more information for the AWR repository. Of course, if you are starting an analysis with the hash uh, reports, uh, or you do some BFON reports, these are feature only on uh, that are available only with AWR. But for a basic system level or SQL level analysis, basically both provides you the same uh, information. Again, what is really missing are these hash data. And hash, da hash data are simply not part of uh, StatsPack. If you want to do a, this kind of analysis uh, with data which are similar to hash, then basically what you have to do is implement a third party tool. There are also several, let's say, frameworks that call a, let's say, simulated hash that provides you more or less the same information. <coughs> the problem is it's not integrated into the database. It's a bit more, let's say, overread uh, uh, using them. But this kind of stuff exists and uh, can be used. And now I want to quickly show you uh, one of these tools, or at least the one that I usually advise my customer to use. Um, if they ask me, uh, we are using standards, what can we use to do this kind of analysis? Um, I must say there are a number of tools in this area, and uh, again, um, uh, for example, there is a list on, um, on Kylie's uh, blog, uh, there is a page based Oracle performance tool, there is a list with plenty of stuff in tweets. Uh, not everything that exists, but it's already a good starting point if you want to see what uh, is on the market. But from what I, I see right now, uh, my advice goes from Lighty uh, for Oracle. It's a tool from a French company. Uh, you know, they do a really good job. They have a tool that does, doesn't do a thousand things, but for the ash part, they're really strong. Uh, it's not very expensive, in my opinion. I mean, it's for one single user, unlimited number of databases. We're talking about, I think, 1,000, uh, 500, uh, 800 euro, something like that. So it's right now something like 1,000 pounds. Or, and then, of course, if you want updates, you have to have a few couple of hundreds. But um, compared to other tools, it's not expensive. If you, if you want a side license, it's something like 12,000 euro. You can use it, and basically 20 people, all possible database. So compared to the diagnostic pack, it's really it's one license, not one, four license of diagnostic pack uh, for a core, for, for CPU. Um, again, in my opinion, it has, uh, I, uh, I did really a comparison uh, about one year ago. It really took several tools and to test them, what I did, I basically check whether I can do the analysis as I show you with my approach. 
opinion if a tool supports good search and analysis, I can advise somebody to use it. And this one, in my opinion, is the best I, I, I saw. Um, and just to give you a bit an idea what you can do, uh, first of all, it's important to say that the tool is not limited to um, to, um, uh, to work on system without the diagnostic tag. The idea is that when you create a new connection, um, let's see. For example, here I have one connection that I created it, and then I say it. I do not have the diagnostic pack, or in this case, I have the diagnostic pack, I have the tuning pack. Okay? And from the other side here, I have a second connection on the same database, which is the database where I have some load now. I say it, uh, I do not have the diagnostic pack, I have the simulated hash that they provide installed, it is L hash. Uh, and in this case, I do not have a stats pack, but if you have a stats pack, you can only click it. And the point is in the interface, you can basically do some stuff with the data you, uh, you provide. So it's also a very good tool if you have the diagnostic pack, in my opinion. In many ways, it's better than what Oracle provides. So if we start or just check uh, what you see if you have the uh, diagnostic pack, Basically, here I have the data of, say, the last hour. Here, basically, I can choose a period, let's say, say the last uh, 60 minutes. Here you see it's something similar to what you get with the um, Enterprise Manager. Uh, I would say the main advantage that this tool has is that you can do some stuff like cache analytics directly here. So, you basically, uh, you can immediately say, I just want to see some events, just some services, user, or you want to see more stuff. So you can already focus, for example, I want only to use, to see what is doing the user, Apex, whatever. So you see it's doing nothing, it makes no sense to focus on it. I want to see, use this, the user, this one on the other side is using a lot of CPU, for example, and also you. So there you have some filtering like the hash data. But what is more interesting, in my opinion, is that you can, first of all, like in the hash analytics, freely choose a period, but then it's what you get uh, directly here. So you have the information, not only which, uh, of course, which state and with all the information you need. You have the activity like it's shown in Enterprise Manager. So in, in this case, it's the percentage of the total the text. And then you have also some information that show you uh, when the statement was active. So you see statements which are always active, other which are active from time to time. If you have something which is active only, um, yeah, not frequently, you can really select all the stuff. And then of course you have all, um, for example, if you want to go on a statement, that's one for example here, exactly. you see statement which runs only from time to time. And of course, if you want to focus on a statement, you get all the information you need. I mean, you, um, if I click here on the statement, um, it shows you stuff like uh, statistic, text plan, SQL error profile, patches, uh, all the stuff. So now, what you're seeing here is if I have the DIAC pack, okay, and now if I have uh, I did. If I do not have the DIAC pack and I say I, I do not want, I want to work with simulated hash, and here I have the simulated hash provided by this tool, you can choose the interval. To not put too much load, I provide an interval of 10 seconds. The regular hash is one second. Every second is taking a snapshot. <coughs> I think every 10 seconds. Depending on the application, it might be good or bad, it doesn't matter. But the point is that even you have the simulated test, you get exactly the same overview. <coughs> okay? You can, like in the other case, uh, select your stuff, you see exactly the same output. The only point, again, you have just less samples, so it's less precise. Okay? Uh, but 
what you do, for example, is you do not have to be a tech for every uh, database, but for some of them, you can also use the same tool and do analysis which are really uh, interesting. Then in addition to the hash part, there is on log also just information. You have some uh, number of reports you can execute. Also, for example, stuff packet where you have reports you can take directly from here. Um, and uh, stuff like that. But I would say the, the real important part is the dash bar. Anyway, the point, in my opinion, is that standard edition, uh, it's a very good choice for, for the price. You can really do good analysis, supported by a tool, from, or from the other side, as I say, if you like SQL Plus, fine, you just have to have uh, the right number of uh, scripts to do it. Okay. <coughs> so core messages, I would say analysis without diagnostic pack uh, is possible. It's not necessarily easier. Okay. And it makes sense because Oracle wants money for it. But you can basically do uh, analysis which are very really similar or at least that takes you at the same uh, conclusion. But of course you need, let's say, a toolkit. Again, it can be a set of scripts tool like Lightly, whatever. Uh, but if you start, let's say, for every problem, just writing statement uh, yourself, it will be, let's say, hard. But with a good framework, set of, let's say, script and so on, in my opinion, uh, it's, it's not that bad. You can do a, a nice analysis. Okay. Um, and what is even more important, that independently of whether you have the attack or not, or less the methodology you have to apply is exactly the same. So what I show you as a say, approach, you should use the same uh, independent of whether you have the react tech or not. Because at the end, what is important to check in this kind of situation is exactly uh, the same. Okay, at the end here, I just have a few reference, uh, of course, um, where you can get the by the way, I think you share the slides with... So uh, I'll send them out. Okay, so I will give you the slides. Mm -hmm. Every script which is mentioned in the slides, you can also click on it, you should directly download it. But otherwise, if you check all, let's say the, the script of my book are here, the page, Kylie's page, where there are a list of performance series here. Um, okay, the scripts and then uh, the tunnels uh, snapper. Okay. So this was what I prepared for the second presentation. Any additional questions, comments?